Hey guys, how's everyone doing today? I'm doing pretty well, thank you for asking. Guess what we have today? I'm sure you can see my lovely background. We have another episode of The Everyday Kitchen. Why is this called The Everyday Kitchen? Well, let me tell you. Because it's ugly. It's old. It's outdated. It's not beautiful. Old appliances. It's the everyday kitchen. That's what I live in. That's what I work with. That's what I bring you. The everyday kitchen. We use paper plates. We use knives that are about 50 years old. We're just everyday people here. So today, what are we going to do? Today... I have decided to try and make my own spaghetti sauce. Now, I have watched videos on different sauces and different things on YouTube, and I really didn't pay much attention, uh, as I don't most of the time for things that I do. I lose track of my concentration. It's only about like that. So, I just went to the store. I bought a bunch of stuff. And I'm going to just throw things together because that's normally how I cook anyway. I throw stuff together. Usually turns out pretty good. So let me give you a little, a little viewing of what we got going on here. Come along with me. We have a handy dandy trusty blender. I have some celery that I cut up a few days ago and I've used in some other stuff. I've got some tomatoes, I have some mushrooms, some onions, bell pepper, a little bit of spinach, some kind of sea salt, some noodles, little Mrs. Dash, a little bit of some Italiano, a seasoning, some extra virgin olive oil, minced garlic, black pepper, and some oregano leaves. I don't even know what oregano leaves are, are used for. i just seen them in a the cupboard. I'm going to use them. That's what I do. I do that kind of stuff. The first thing I'm going to do, and, and I know some people uh, use paste. I have a buddy on Facebook that uh, I, I mentioned I was going to make some homemade spaghetti sauce. And he said, don't forget the, the paste. And, well, I'm not going to use paste. I don't need paste. And I didn't want to get anything canned, and I don't want to try to make my own paste. Uh, so I'm basically going to grind up some tomatoes. I'm going to fry some stuff. And we're just going to kind of go with it and see what we get. So let's get these tomatoes going. And I don't use cutting boards. I use a paper plate for the most part. That way I know... You know, I don't have an old cutting board that's soaking up a bunch of bacteria and junk, and I don't have to worry about it. Uh, let me put this here. And I'm just cutting these up so I can stick them in the blender. Make it a little easier on me. I think the tomatoes aren't quite ripe enough, but we'll be alright. Cut up some onions, guys. I don't care if I waste a little bit of onion as long as I get the peeling away. Don't really care. Now we got us a bell pepper. Uh, 
All right, guys. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my onions and my peppers and some of this celery and some of this other goodness that you've seen over here in a skillet. I'm going to fry it all up a little bit. Then I'm going to add my tomato juice. I'm going to add that in there. Stir it up. I'm, I'm going to make a vegetarian uh, spaghetti tonight is what I'm making. I'm not going to add any meat or anything. So just for the heck of it, I wanted to do that. So let's add these things over here to the skillet. All right, we're going to let that cook down for a little bit. I turned the heat down just a little bit. Um, going to let it cook down, get it nice and tender and sautéed-ish. Um, then I'm going to add the old tomatoes. Going to add those in there. Going to kind of cook it up a little bit. And once it gets a little closer done, I'm going to add a little bit of spinach leaves. I'm going to kind of tear them up a little bit, kind of break them down a smidgen. Put them in there. See how that goes. Got some other goodies to stick off in there. I think we're going to be alright, guys. I don't think it's going to be any worse than the canned mess that we buy. So, I'm feeling pretty confident here. Let's give this a little while. Cooking down pretty good here. I'm gonna go ahead and add. I'm gonna go ahead and add some mushrooms, just because I can. And we're going to add some garlic. Alright, I'm going to let that cook on down. I got the onions, the peppers, got some garlic, got mushrooms in there. I think that's it. We're going to let that cook down for a little bit. I turned the heat down just a little bit, got it covered up. Then once that's done, then we're going to add a few of our spices and things. Uh, whenever I think about it, I like to try to add my spices and things later in the cooking because I, I feel like if you add them too soon, it kind of cooks them out sometimes kind of, you know, uh, lessens the the taste of them maybe a little bit. So uh, I'm going to add the, the spices and uh, the sea salt and all that kind of stuff once that gets cooked down. Then I'm going to pour in the tomato stuff. We're going to go from there, guys. Stick around. Oh yeah, looking good. Now you might be asking yourself, Mike, why is there another pan? And why is it steaming? Why is that pan steaming? Well, let me turn it off. <clears throat> I'm going to transfer all the goodness 
over to here. Why? Well, because I wasn't thinking. I'm used to cooking everything in my iron skillet. But I'm probably not going to have enough room in there to put all the rest of the stuff. Um, and not only that, by having all that cooked in my iron skillet, it's going to give it a nice flavoring. A seasoning, if you will. We all love our iron, iron skillets. I don't wash mine a whole lot. I'll just wipe it out and kind of let all the leftovers stay in there. That's how I do it. To an extent. Not grossness, but to an extent like this. So, we're going to transfer over to the other pan. Let's do that, okay? Let's do it! Alright, now for the big finishing touches here. I'm finally dumping this tomatic slurry in to the pan. I don't know how this is going to work, but let's do it. Looks pretty gross. Not going to lie. Maybe once it cooks down, it won't look quite so weird. Alright, let's add all of the other ingredients. Let's do this. Alright, let's add some black pepper. Italian seasoning. Oregano leaves. A little bit of Mrs. Dash. And some of this sea salt. And I think I need to add one little splash of some sugar in there. I don't want to, but I think I better. I think that'll help to kind of uh, control some of the acidity, some of the tomato-y harshness. So, maybe. I don't know. I'm not going to lie. It looks different than what I'm used to, but then again, I'm used to eating out of jars and cans. So, I'm just going to let it simmer on down just a bit. And we'll go from there, guys. Stick around. Alright, guys. She's cooking on down. I think I'm going to add the spinach leaves in. Kind of pull them apart a little bit. Break them up a little bit. Stick them in there. Let it cook down a little bit. And then I'm going to put the noodles on. See what we got here, guys. Let's continue. Alright, so we're just going to let that cook down just a little bit. I'm going to put the noodles on, and there's nothing special about the noodles. I'm going to use linguine noodles. Um, I just like them because they're a little fatter. Gives you a little bit more in the bite. Um, the only thing I was looking for with noodles really outside of that was no sodium, and these have zero sodium. Uh, they're nothing special. You can find no sodium noodles all in the supermarket. I didn't really know. Uh, some of them have like 10 milligrams, 15, 20. Um, and, and I just kept looking and I found some with none. And I actually had these at home already. And these have no sodium as well. And these are just normal spaghetti noodles. And there's just a little handful of them. I'm going to add them in there with it. Mix it up a little bit, 
So I'm going to cook, let this keep cooking down. I'm going to put on some water for the noodles. And I'm going to be eating probably an early supper because I'm hungry. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Uh, 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 keep going. Uh. Guys, we're winding down here. Now you might have noticed that I broke my noodles. I like breaking my noodles. Uh, matter of fact, whenever I make spaghetti, a lot of times I'll take my spatula in there, even though I break it up into small in, in, in a half like that. A lot of times I'll take my spatula and go in there and chop it up even more. I like small noodles. I don't like big noodles are going to flap me around. That's what she said. <laughs> That's... <laughs> anyway, yeah. I don't like noodles that are hard to eat and they're all messy and all over your face, especially when you got manly beards like this. It's nice to have the noodles smaller. That's not what she said. Anyway. Cooking them up. Now I reckon I could have added maybe a half a cup of some flour or something like that to, to the sauce to kind of thicken it up a bit. But I ain't too worried about it. Uh, it's not overly runny or anything. Matter of fact, it's a whole lot more chunky and robust than what you're going to buy in a can or a jar. So... And I did take one little taste test of it with a different spoon, plastic spoon, threw it away. One of these. Yes. And, uh, not bad. Not bad at all, guys. You're seeing my recipe real time just like I am. First time trying something, literally my own... Thing I'm just throwing together. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there, Italianos, other such chefs and cooks that would look at this and be appalled and probably rolling over on the ground kicking and screaming. But don't care. Looks pretty good to me. Everything's going smooth. I can't wait to eat. I'm hungry. Not only do I have this, which is an extremely healthy meal, but I also have uh, stuff to make a salad later on tonight whenever I get hungry. I like to eat late at night. Uh, I like to eat soups. I like to eat salads. And of course, as you know, if you ever follow my channel, I love pickles. But I'm trying to cut out the majority of pickles. Because they're, the one pickle that I eat is almost twice the daily allowance of sodium in the one pickle. So, yeah, I'm trying to cut out some of that and at least be aware of what I'm doing. And this did take a little longer than opening up a couple of cans or a couple of jars. But having said that, it wasn't real difficult at all because I, I always use onions and peppers anyway. 
Um, so I would have had to cut those up anyway. Uh, the only real thing is the tomatoes. Uh, cutting them up, throwing them in the blender. I'm sure if you got some kind of food processor or whatever other kind of machinery out there there is, you can do it that way too, but I have a blender, so it did pretty good. I'm happy with it. I don't think the tomatoes were totally ripe. They were kind of, uh, not hard, hard, but they didn't have like a sweet kind of feel or sweet smell or anything really to them, so they weren't totally ready to eat, I don't think, but you get what you get. And it looks pretty good. So I'm going to cook these noodles down. And before you know it, we're going to be doing a taste test, guys. All real time. First time doing this. Never have done it before. So what you see is what you get. Here in the Everyday Kitchen. <laughs> Sorry. Get excited over food. Now we wait. Alright guys, time for the real-time taste test. Very different looking right off the bat. Hmm. It's not bad. There's not a real strong tomatoey flavor. You can definitely tell it's healthy. It just has that healthy taste. Hmm. It's definitely something that you could eat a good portion of and not feel guilty. And that's what I was wanting. Uh, there is not a strong tomatoey taste. I don't know if that's good or bad. It don't really bother me. I mean, I put plenty of tomatoes in there. It's good. I can see me doing this again. Uh, I like having the mushrooms and the textures in there. The mushrooms and the uh, celery that I put in there. The onions and peppers. Uh, if you notice, I don't dice everything up tiny. I like to have texture in my food. That's pretty good, guys. And, I mean, it's about as no sodium as you're going to get. 
I don't know uh, if tomatoes have sodium in them naturally. I don't really know. Um, but I, I can't really see this having enough sodium to even care about. <laughs> so, outside of that little uh, palm bit of uh, the sea salt that I put in there. I don't see that being an issue at all. This could definitely fit in a low sodium to almost no sodium diet. Really. Yeah, I'll be doing that again. And you've seen, uh, I don't measure out any ingredients or anything. I just put whatever I want in there. That's just how I cook. Um, you might be different. You might know exactly what to go in, what amount, and how many ounces of this and that. But I just toss stuff in and go for it. So, anyways, guys, I'm going to wrap up this video. It's a pretty long video. Hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it doing something totally new. Uh, something as uh, new for me as it is for you, maybe. So, give it a shot if you want. Totally healthy. Recommend it. Uh, I'm going to go sit down at my desk and continue eating. I'm probably going to eat another bowl. Guys, hope you enjoyed the Everyday Kitchen. I try to bring the real household to you. Not some HGTV fancy uh, million dollar kitchen. I enjoy it. It's fun. So, check out all my other videos. Like, share, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff if you want to. And don't forget, guys. Get up, get out, get red, do it to it. Even when creating your own tomato sauce. Or whatever it is. I guess it's tomato sauce. We'll see y'all later. I'm going to go eat.